Hello and welcome to China Dispatches, a European Chamber podcast that shares underground insights from European business leaders and experts on doing business in China. I'm your host Gao Rei. The European Chamber published its annual business confidence survey in early May. It shows a significant improvement in perceptions about market opening. 19% of respondents report significant market opening in their industry, which is the highest level recorded in the past decade. And 26% of respondents report some opening, the same proportion as last year. In today's episode, we will look at some of the survey's findings related to market access and the impacts of changes in market access on companies' revenue and investment decisions. I'm going to be joined by two industry experts, Mario Huang, Chair of Banking Sub Working Group, and Johannes Wilhater, Chair of Construction Working Group. Thank you very much for joining. We will discuss market access situation of banking and construction industries and their willingness to expand in China. Ensure greater market access and level playing field for European companies in China is in the European Chamber's mission statement. It's encouraging that some of these market opening developments are in areas where the European Chamber's working groups have been advocating for change. According to the Business Confidence Survey 2024, respondents from financial services industry were the most upbeat about market opening, with over 80% reporting some opening in their industry. Mario, as a sector under financial services, in what areas did the banking industry experience market opening in the past years? Which developments were the most meaningful? Hi, good morning. Uh, good morning, Gary. Thank you for, for the question. For the first question about the market opening and the developments for the banking sector in China, it's quite clear that as European banking players uh, operating in China, we all recognize the very recent opening up, or continuous opening up of the financial sector in China. It's a, a very clear policy implemented by the Chinese government in order to encourage a further integration of the foreign financial institutions uh, into the Chinese uh, financial sector. Uh, we can confirm that uh, also in terms of market access, uh, um, a number of uh, new licenses uh, uh, for uh, different areas of uh, business that have been uh, recently granted to some of the European banks and also to other international banks as well. For example, in the area of the asset management and of the security companies in China and also about uh, uh, JV. Uh, now it's uh, following very recent uh, opening up of uh, and relaxation of uh, of the related measures uh, in the shareholding structure for uh, the financial uh, sector uh, JV joint ventures cases in China now it's allowed for the foreign shareholder to hold the majority of the shares and even to become full controller and to own 100% of the share of the previous JV case so the market access has been relaxed quite a lot from this perspective were these developments in market access enough to encourage additional investment? We recognize the efforts from the side of the Chinese government to further opening up and to grant new licenses to foreign players. But uh, the financial ecosystem and also as uh, overall Chinese market ecosystem is not sufficiently favorable to let foreign players uh, to deploy their full potential for providing complementary activities in China. As we are limited by uh, some of the local peculiar limitations uh, in terms of funding, in terms of products, uh, and in order to achieve our full capacity in providing our complementary activities in China, it's very important to achieve a scale of economy, which is almost impossible for foreign players uh, based on the current framework of the regulations uh, and also the ecosystem. So overall, the market situation is increasingly challenging for foreign players, uh, also due to the increased competition. And on the other side, China is also entering in a more mature stage of uh, development, which means the growth uh, rate or growth speed of the economy is also slower than the past. So uh, overall, FDI have slowed down quite a lot uh, from abroad into China. 
and overall the financial institutions uh, are operating with a level of profitability which is lower than the group level in uh, other side of the global markets and the level of confidence currently is not that high in terms of um, new investments uh, uh, in China. Uh, so overall, we are convinced that the, uh, there is a very, uh, very huge room to increase our contribution to the local economy, to the Chinese economy, uh, by uh, cooperating also with the local financial institutions. Uh, so uh, also, we, we aim to play a bigger role in facilitating the China-Europe cross-border investments and trade apart from the contribution to the local economy. For civil engineering and construction, 40% of respondents in the industry report some market opening. Uh, Johannes, in what areas did construction industry experience market opening in the past years, and which developments were the most meaningful? Now, to be honest, I think construction itself hasn't opened up in the last years, but there are new opportunities around. Yeah, uh, Construction itself is pretty limited and restricted since the year 2004. Since then, actually, it's very difficult for foreign investing construction companies to be active in China. If we talk about opening up, and maybe what I should be saying here is that actually limitations were that actually we were only allowed, foreign investing construction companies were only allowed to build for woofers and joint ventures. Now, this is very restricted, I would say. If we talk about opening up, then I think that there are new areas of construction, uh, new business opportunities which are out there. Yeah? And for example, one is the construction of data centers. The other one is the construction of factories around EVs. Yeah, So I know that actually many people are active in these areas. There is also the construction and the maintenance of um retirement facilities yeah which means actually institutions for old people to live like hotels or something yeah so these are new areas and i definitely think that actually foreign investing construction companies could be contributing to that and if it's not a foreign invested construction company then it could actually be a foreign invested developer for some in the broader sense of the world for example uh, because there's definitely already lots of experience in in the maintenance in the construction and the maintenance of, of retirement homes and i think if a company wants a foreign company wants to come to china and build up such facilities there are chances there 11% of respondents report market access has decreased in their respective industries. Um, civil engineering and construction is among the industries that reported most market closing. Do you have any comments on that, Johannes? Basically speaking, the market is fully open. Now, if it comes to construction, I have to tell you, the playing field is leveled out since 2019 completely, legally speaking. Yeah. What is the problem is that, for example, local competitors, they have a competitive advantage and they have been nurtured for about uh, 10 years. Yeah. And now they're strong, they're huge and they have a, well, they have a, they share a big local advantage. Yeah. Because construction itself is always a little bit of tricky business because you need so many construction workers and it is very hard to keep them on the payroll all the time. Uh, so from this point of view, actually, uh, local construction companies always enjoy a benefit and an advantage. But legally speaking, the market is open. Mario, do you have anything to add on market closing from your industry? The market share of the European banking players and also the other international peers in China have been declining over the past decade and quite sharply in the very recent years. The market share now it's only half if we compare it to the market share of foreign banking financial players in China of 10 to 15 years ago. This is something that we can see from the market data and means that the ecosystem, as mentioned before, is uh, not that favorable to let us to grow our business size uh, as of today in, in the past years. We have also observed uh, some cases of uh, exit uh, of European banks from the Chinese market, uh, while in the past uh, almost four or five years, we have seen only 
one case of new establishment of the branch from European bank. So we had more exit cases from the Chinese market. And this is, of course, related to the challenges and the relatively low level of confidence that I have mentioned before. And of course, as an impact, this will also bring some negative effects on the overall confidence of the foreign financial institutions when they consider to further invest in China. And of course, the presence of the foreign financial players is uh, is much related also to the level of confidence of the uh, foreign uh, multinational companies uh, operating in China. So the impact that we can say is also quite important from this perspective. Due to market access issues uh, or regulatory barriers, 58% of respondents missed business opportunities in China in 2023. Although this is a slight improvement from 2022, the proportion of those reporting lost business is still the second highest on record. A fifth of respondents report the business opportunities they missed would have been worth more than a quarter of their annual revenue. For financial services industry, the data is 69% missed business opportunities, while for construction, the data is 50%. What are the key barriers, market access or regulatory challenges, that resulted in missing business opportunities? How about we start from Johannes? Okay, no, I think in 2023, there have been no major challenges. I mean, Regulatorily speaking, yeah, of course, you can imagine that 2023, the business outlook was basically not good uh, throughout all industries. yeah, And um, and I think this is what really were hindering people to come in and, and, and start new investments. And I can say this actually from a personal perception. Um, during the lockdown period, nobody could be coming, actually. And once the, the borders were open, we were actually awaiting the big champagne party here in terms of investment, but nothing happened. So it... It took some time for investors to restore confidence, and now it is picking up again. But the hurdles, actually, they were business hurdles, I would say. Or if, if it was a regulatory hurdle, then it was absolutely a general hurdle, like no possibility to travel, nothing very specifically construction-wise. Uh, what about Mario for banking? As European banking uh, players in China, by definition, we are limited uh, in terms of business capability, funding capability because of lack of retail network in China and uh, subject also to some of the limitation uh, on the cross-border uh, transactions uh, among China and the rest of the world. So overall, our uh, capacity is subject to a number of limitations and natural disadvantage compared to local peers, uh, uh, especially on the side of funding. Uh, so due to that reason, we are not able to fully uh, deploy our capacity in providing bigger uh, contributions to the uh, local economy in some of the areas, including the green financing, green transition, and uh, in terms of contribution to achieve the carbon neutrality goal of the country. Local large size banks have access to some very important tools made available by the Chinese central bank, which is not accessible for foreign players, generally speaking, or with very limited access for foreign players. One of the major challenges also due to regulation, most of the financial regulation in China are designed for the large local banks, foreign banks, which, as you can imagine, have an average size of the business and of the capital and of the organization, which is much, much lower than the average of the Chinese peers. So actually, most of the regulations are very difficult to be adopted by European banks. Once adopted, they bring to a cost structure, which is sometimes unaffordable for foreign players. And that could endanger the path of a sustainable development of the foreign financial players in China in the long term. So this may result in the fact that it's very difficult for foreign players to achieve the scale of business, which is big enough in order to absorb all the costs implied by the uh, regulatory requirements uh, which are designed for the local large banks. Uh, 
we move on to the next topic about investments. Worryingly, the proportion of respondents that would still likely increase their investments in China if granted greater market opening dropped 10 percentage points year on year, now standing at 53%. What do you think the reasons for the significant drop? Is it perhaps a symptom of promise fatigue? Johannes, you can start first. So actually, 2023 was one of the dullest year ever. Yeah, we're all waiting actually for the big revival of local demand. In some areas, this has happened. For example, we see for electric vehicles or everything. Automobile industry had the best year ever in 2022, from what I hear from colleagues. Yeah, I mean, many people from the German invested automotive industry, and they all told me 2020, stunningly enough, they have been locked down, but had the best year ever. They couldn't have explained to themselves. 2023, there's a sharp decline. Now, for construction, is government subsidies now pouring in just to sustain a basic level of demand. So really, it's a drop in demand, which makes us despair. Mario? Yeah, on banking side, we are all trying to be resilient. That's reflected also from client base, majorly referring to the foreign investor companies in China. And I think it's quite related that this kind of confidence in terms of investments is quite related to also to the strategy of each own company. For banks, we can generally divide it into two categories, two kind of business models. One is is for the case of the the branches, uh, which is also my case uh, of the Italian bank. Uh, and in terms of numbers, most of the European banks, they operate in China as, uh, as a branch instead of a locally incorporated uh, entity, mm, as uh, there are also some French and German cases of, of legal entities operating in China in, in the banking sector. Mm, so if you operate as a branch, majorly you have the mission to support your captive client, which means uh, Italian companies uh, for Italian bank. Uh, and the French companies for French bank, while in the case of locally incorporated entities, their business scope is to work with the local market, take some of the local market risk as well. So this makes a huge difference in terms of attitude in the approach with the local market. If you operate as a branch, it depends on the trend of our client base, actually. Uh, if uh, our client base is resilient in China, then of course we must stay here in China to, to continue our mission in uh, supporting them. Uh, uh, and uh, if you work with local market, I think uh, the competition issue is much stronger than the past. So overall, I have mentioned before that there have been some exit cases, but also in recent years, a new branch from a European bank has been established in China. And as I know, some other European financial institutions, they are still looking at China with potential new projects to start implementing the business here in China. So I think the, the potential of the Chinese market is still recognized by the uh, European players. Uh, and uh, we will see based on the second half of this year uh, performance uh, of Chinese economy. And uh, I think it's uh, as a market is still very attractive and no one of us uh, is planning or, or willing to reduce our presence or capacity. Uh, so we would like to make a, a more sustainable our business model here in China. But this is a, uh, a path that we have uh, to work uh, uh, jointly with the uh, local uh, regulators uh, uh, because uh, uh, currently the challenges are still too difficult uh, for foreign players. The proportion of respondents that report their industry is already fully open reached 39%, the highest level on record. In construction industry, the number reached 62%, which is the highest among all surveyed industries, while only 14% of respondents in financial services industry report their industry is already fully open. Across all industries, 29% expect to see meaningful opening take place within the next five years. Financial services industry is quite positive that the number reached 54%. What is your expectation for your industry in terms of potential market opening? Johannes? Okay, now in terms of potential market opening, 
and the new investment pouring in from Europe. Yeah? Uh, I would see that, for example, there are changes um, to be realized in the sector, intelligence and construction materials and uh, retirement homes. I think this is a new input with new technology is needed from the West. China, China does already have some know-how here, but of course they still can learn and there are things to be learned. So I think this is where new investment could be coming in and where new mm-hmm. markets are opening for foreign investors coming from abroad. Um, mm-hmm. There are chances in the market opening up for people who are already here. This is actually the construction of data centers, for example, or in the automotive sector. I hear many people say that factories are still being built because, Mm -hmm. for example, all those car manufacturers, they're having, for example, to turn green, they're having to turn electric, and they're investing Mm -hmm. into battery factories and battery construction and uh, joint ventures with with Chinese battery manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So there is construction activity is still going on, but this is something nobody would be coming in for because coming in is too onerous and too burdensome. This is something where people who are already here actually have a chance mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. to go, go after it. And the interesting thing is the foreign invested construction industry in China, as I said, it's not foreign firms anymore. It's actually mm-hmm. people from foreign firms and some of them are foreigners coming out and running their own companies mm-hmm. and being extremely localized. Yeah, This mm-hmm. is those players are having chances in those areas. Mm-hmm. In the second a tranche of, of market opportunities. I don't see there's new investment coming in. It's actually for companies who are already here. This is where they're having chances. Mario? Yes, as for banking, I think it's uh, a little bit uh, peculiar uh, compared to other sectors uh, because we all know that the financial sector is uh, always one of the most protected but sensitive area uh, in terms of uh, liberalization because it, it represents the channel through which the uh, Chinese uh, government and the Chinese central bank uh, exercise the control over the economy uh, in terms of the GDP growth uh, through the Chinese banks, uh, uh, the liquidity in the market market is directly controlled through the commercial banks, which are actually all owned by the state, uh, the central government or the local government. Only 1% of the of the market uh, share of the financial sector is belonging to the foreign players. Uh, all the rest uh, uh, basically is directly or indirectly controlled by the, by the state currently. So having said that, in terms of the key role of the financial in supporting the real economy, the GDP growth in China, we can expect that uh, China will, of course, continue with opening up as already happened in the past years. But in terms of approach, if we talk about the further liberalization, so we can expect that the trend of the opening up will continue, but be very gradual and progressive in order to preserve the control of the sector. But also, I, I think the Chinese government will keep in mind that they are target to build Shanghai as an international financial center. So uh, the, the trend, I mean, uh, from this perspective can, uh, is not uh, reversible. At the same time, 22% do not expect to see meaningful opening at all. The number for construction industry is 31%. As both of you lead Chambers working groups and the working group's key function is to advocate, could you give some examples where businesses feel like they are banning on closed doors when trying to advocate for change? Johannes? The real estate sector, honestly speaking. Before the financial crisis, everybody was talking about real estate. And in 2006, China was actually curbing foreign investment in real estate have drastically from one day to another. And the relevant restrictions, they are basically 75% plus are still there. So we thought actually that during the recent years with all this Chinese distrend in real estate, that it would be liberalizing this just to let actually, to have the distressed project being sold out to foreign investors, much better than having them there and not generating any return. But this did not happen. And we are actually trying to push for this liberalization already for many years. And in the recent three years, our main argument has been, guys, these Projects we're having that that distress the need for foreign money coming in. Please let us inject and help, but nothing happened. Yeah? So I think in real estate sector, we're really pushing our heads on closed doors. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mario? 
Yes, uh, Jonas mentioned about real estate, which is uh, not relevant for your sector for the construction, but actually very <laughs> relevant also for banking for financial overall, because uh, you know in the past uh, uh, some banks in China, the real estate represented the core part of the balance sheet in terms of loan granted uh, for both to the developers and also to the buyers of the apartments as well. I think this transformation of this sector is a push for financial sector to change towards more healthier and more sustainable business model for the financial institutions. Most of them, they are trying to build the business model to be less dependent on the real estate sector, actually. And the other key um, factor for financial sector, of course, is the cross-border air because, uh, as you know, the capital flow is still uh, subject to quotas uh, set by the Chinese regulators uh, and also in terms of the data because the banks will manage uh, a huge number of critical data when we manage the banking transactions, especially the cross-border, is very sensitive area. So we can perceive that Chinese government is spending major efforts in solving this issue, in pushing this toward uh, a more sustainable model. We know that they are trying to implement some pilot project, a pilot zone, in order to test the feasibility of a more relaxation in this regarding. When we achieve a higher level of liberalization for the cross-border financial services that, of course, would be concrete evidence of the very big achievement for the financial sector. I think the last question you both may have already touched upon, uh, in which areas do you see potential for more opening? Uh, do you have anything to add? Maybe we'll end on the positive note if you can find any. Yeah, as I said, in intelligent construction materials, intelligent services to retirement homes. Those are the things where new players could be coming in, I think. In terms of construction itself, which is already on the ground happening, it's EVs, batteries. Those are the things where people need factories, where people need research facilities. And this is where the activity is happening for the time being, but probably there won't be justified new players coming in. Mario, final comments? Yes. Okay. For uh, banks further potential for opening of the sector, I think very important areas uh, include the, the green finance, uh, which is very important topic of a cooperation, especially between China and Europe, uh, but not only I mean, in, t in terms of uh, international cooperation. China has very important goal to achieve the carbon neutrality and some foreign players, uh, including the European banks, which are among the pioneers in this green finance area, sustainable finance area can bring much of their value and the practice from Europe to Chinese market to share with the local peers and try to bring successful cases of business models also in terms of circular economy and related areas. Apart from green finance, we have mentioned broadly before about the cross-border and that's also a very big area of more cooperation between the Chinese and the foreign players, European players into jointly assist uh, the, uh, the Chinese uh, companies uh, for expanding their business uh, overseas outside of China. And uh, I think the Chinese government is uh, encouraging innovation uh, also in the finance area, generally speaking, uh, in terms of technology and R&D, but also for a finance area, they are encouraging the innovation in terms of products and the services. Also here, uh, of course, European banks uh, can bring some uh, good practices and uh, to share with the local market uh, and push forward the opening up of the mm -hmm. Chinese finance uh, sector. That's all for today. Thank you again, Mario and Johannes for joining. If you like our podcast, please subscribe to China Dispatches, recommend to your colleagues and friends and share on social media. Also, we'd love to hear your feedback. You can find contact details in the show notes. This is Gao Rei from China Dispatches. Thanks for listening.